Yes, sir. Town to one's media hashtag. See your media hashtag. Actually, I didn't even do any hashtags, man. I did one hashtag. Hold on, let me let me start over. Yeah, I gotta start over. Let's start over. Start over. I hate not giving like the whole thing. So we're gonna do it like this. Ready? So town to one's media hashtag. To your media hashtag. To your podcast hashtag. To your sessions hashtag. To your merch. Hashtag too many hashtags. He hashtagging it out. To see, you know what I'm saying? It's the tongue twister, but you know it's kind of catchy. I, 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 I've been using that as that intro. We got to keep it going. So now y'all know. Look, here today, you know what I'm saying? I got to do my intro right with this guy right here. Um, been knowing him since college. He's been doing this thing. Um, he's got a consistent thing with his life. Um, basketball just seems to oddly be the theme of his life. Um, really has the the athlete spirit. But now it's transitioning over into films. You know, we have we have things called, you know, the Hooper. You know, but we also have other movies that we you know that we've been on. We have two B credits. Facts. You know what I'm saying? We've been on screen with the likes of Houston Legend Steve Francis. We've been on screens with the likes of eighty five South Show Pioneer Chico Bean. We've been moving. We've been grinding, but this film thing ain't New to him, it's true to him. So, Mr. Zakari, yeah. Mr. 3D Films. Yeah, what's good, what's good, You know good. what I'm saying? What's going on, man? What's good, brother? Ah, you know, long overdue. Oh, yeah, ah, definitely. long overdue. Definitely. Long overdue, but I always, like I said off camera, you know, everything happens for a reason, man. Oh, yeah. You know, first and foremost, I just want to ask you, how you doing today? You doing good? You doing man, all right? I'm good, I'm blessed. Any day above the ground, man, I I say that I'm winning. Just yeah. like 2 Chain said, you feel me? That's a... That's a real fact. I respect that, bro. I respect that. That's good, man. That's good. Glad you're doing good today, man. You know, we got to get into a few things. You know, we got to uh, first and foremost, before we get into this film that you hear, that I see the, the merch, oh, yeah, you uh, branding, you is everything. Know. You know, so before we get into that, let's get into the background. Mm -hmm. Because although this is the first time that this will be shown, this is the second time we've had the talks, but we got to get the people the background of you as a person. For sure, for sure. So I know you come out of Houston. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I know ball's been consistent with your life, mm -hmm. college athlete. Mm -hmm. I think I don't know if number one scorer at same in same Houston history. No, I'm tenth all time scoring. I'm number one uh, three point field goal career leader in right. Sam Houston. So we up there in the rankings for yeah. sure, for sure. So when did we got two things we're gonna ask? Mm -hmm. When did film come in your life? Because that's what we're promoting today. Sure. But also when did ball come in your life as well? Because they intersect because of what we're talking about. Exactly. Honestly, man, my my parents remind me all the time how when I was a child, I used to crawl around the TV trying to figure out how these people got inside this TV. So I say that that love of film came before I could even walk. Knocking. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out for real. And, and I never forget the older I got, even at a young age, I used to just, just watch films differently you know, than my average peers. You know, I could just sit there for hours at a time just watching new films, new and new films, and just studying these actors, and that's where the love of acting came from. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I feel like early elementary is when ball came into play. I mean, I picked up my first ball when I was probably a toddler, but taking serious. Right. You know, like elementary, grew up um, playing with the Houston Jaguars organ organization, which is also the Hoops organization. Played with them as well as through um, through high school with D.G.F. Hoops. And um, I was also doing a little acting on the side. You know, I went to the Unsung with Theater, acted over there, so a, few, a few plays, uh, did some school things as well. But I kind of hung it up to focus on basketball because the film thing can be really – you know, expensive. It it can be expensive. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, and for people, let's just be frank, bro. People that look like us, exactly. Early on, that's not always the the path we either get pushed or we either are eye open to that. That's an option. Yeah, factual, factual. And for me, it was just to a point to where I wanted to do what I felt like was best with the cards that were handed to me. You know, I mean, certain people are blessed with certain things. You know, and I feel like. When you hone in on the cards that you're dealt, and I look at them like, damn, why well, I got these and not those over there? Right, right. Like you, like you play with the ones that's dealt in your favor, and it works out. So I hung up the filming 
uh, around middle school, early when I was about to go to to junior high, and that's when I really started f- focusing on basketball. I'm talking about training all the time. We talking two, three a day sessions. This is before high school, right. you know, and that's whenever my game really started elevating. And I always knew that I was going to use this ball as a tool to do what I'm here for today. You feel me? So in essence, after I left college, everybody was wondering why you ain't go pro. And I told them, I did what I wanted to do with this. You feel me? I'm in the record books. I travel all over the nation. Hell, we even got to go uh, around the world, go to Costa Rica, you know, and play and things. I felt like I got all that I wanted out of it. It's time to do what I really love and what I was here for, for real. Right. And that's Could, what I wanted to do. Because you was pushing, like I said, you was pushing film in college. But, at, you know, when you're pushing film in college, it's kind of like sometimes they're just school projects. Exactly. Even though it might be a lot of work to it, you might put it on the social media. But, you know, school projects, mm-hmm. I don't want to say it's typically not people's best work, but it's people figuring themselves out. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It, it, might, it might be good, but it's like, yo, this might – this is the start of something. Exactly. And it was definitely the start. And the crazy part about it, too, most of the films, pretty much every film outside of one that I released was actually not a school project. It was actually just something that I wanted to create because, honestly, the Film Society, SM, I wouldn't accept it in. You know, they probably thought that I wasn't serious because they seen I was an athlete and they didn't think I could, you know, sacrifice time. And little did they know that gave me the confidence I needed to use my stipend, buy my first camera, and start learning the ropes by myself. You feel me? Facts. There's also a thing, too, that's a little funny to me. Because um, when you talk about that film society, and I'm not just talking about saying this could be everywhere. When you think about people that are really in the arts, you know what I'm saying? When we're talking about acting, we're talking about producing, directing, really theater, really my movie side of things, you know what I'm saying? When we really kind of get into the uh, grand scheme of things, the vibe of the people aren't re- they kind of I don't want to say they look the same. Yeah. But you know the look I'm, yeah. I'm I'm thinking of, you know what I'm saying? It's more if you're if you're kind of athletic build or you look like a certain way, especially us really look like a certain way like mm-hmm. then you know you kind of like oh they might, you know, typecast them or um put them in just as extras or they're not serious and mm-hmm. things like that. So I'm glad you kind of touched on that topic. So um, I know. So we on the, we on after college. You know what I'm saying? Yep. We're we're right now. We on the path of I'm done hooping. I've accomplished mm-hmm. everything. Put your name in the record books. What you did? That's a fact. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Get your clap clap bravos for, for that. Sure. And um, but that work ethic had to that I see that work ethic transferred over. Oh yeah, definitely. Do you think like that mindset of in sports? To where it's like you got to click on, you got to be in game mode, you got to go really put that work in. Do you think that clicked over into film as well? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I've always been a hard worker. Anything I do, anything I focus on, I'm just I'm just 100% dedicated to. I mean, I've seen my, my game elevate from just junior high, high school to college. And even when I redshirted, sat out and saw my development in one year, just seeing that in hindsight, everything all the work that you put in you get out what you put in and that's just a fact you don't put in a lot of work you're not gonna get a lot out and a lot of people can complain about it and a lot of people can envy people's success but i always tell people envy the work that they put in don't envy the success because they did more work than you think you feel me like um like steve harvey said you have to fail more than you succeed that's just life you gonna get more no's than yes. You gonna get way more. So I learned that in basketball. I learned that right out of college too because I had to start over. You feel me? Now I'm not this basketball star. I'm regular person in in the world trying to find find his way. You feel me? And I gotta find a job. First job I was outside of Sam's from seven a.m. to eight p.m. trying to sell direct TV whenever Fire Stick started getting hot. You feel me? And right then, I learned law of averages. You feel me? The more no's you get, the closer you're going to get to that yes. And that's what got me that mindset of learning how to accept those rejections. Because in basketball, the rejections you get is a missed shot. You can correct that. But outside in, in, in the world trying to work, you know, face-to-face, trying to get somebody's, you know, um, affirmation or, or just trying to get somebody's um, – attention or approval you gotta work you feel me like you might get that that one that one yes but it probably took about 20 no's to get that one yes but 
you get a hundred no's, you feel me? You can get up to five to ten yeses. You never know. That's why I tell people all the time, life is all about experiences. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everything I went through from, I worked hella jobs all the way up to this point. A lot of people see the all the accolades from Toby and all of this. Mm -hmm. That took a that took a, a, a long and hard road. You feel me? So I mean, I started off as a PA in the extra, you know, just trying to learn the ropes. Because like I said, even though I went to school for media, it wasn't per se film. I had to learn all the film reps on my own. And in this in this industry, it's all about who you know and what you know. Yeah. The truth. <laughs> you feel me? So I mean, closed mouths don't get fed. So every time that I go into the room, I humble myself about the position because I know that the expert anything is once a beginning. So I just go in and just keep my eyes open, my ears open, my mouth shut, and just learning, learning, and waiting, being patient, and working behind closed doors. And then next thing you know, we right here today. See, hey, that's preaching right there. It's a damn sermon. That's a million dollars worth of game. So, that's a million dollars worth of game, but I'll take $10,000 worth of game. You know what I'm saying? So. If anybody wants to drop them them coins. But, <laughs> nah, so I love that. I love that for sure, bro. And now we're here today. We're here talking about your film, your film, a Dakari film, The Hooper. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got to ask you. It's a lot of people in here, a lot of credits in here. Something oh, yeah, you sure. wrote, sure, something sure. you put together. How hard was it to? How hard is it to be? Because I'm a creative too, and I understand it. When you're being a creative, you got to put on a creative hat and a businessman, and got to put on a business hat. They two different hats. How two hard? Totally different hats. <laughs> how hard was it to balance both hats? Oh my goodness, it's so hard. It's hard, but it's worth it. Okay. You're gonna learn from every experience and encounter. Um, this is my first, this is the most major move that I've done since I've been filming. And mm -hmm. this is the first of many. You know, the next one's going to be bigger. But beforehand, I was doing things really with little to no budget. And most of it was straight out of pocket for me. Now I'm going through, you know, distribution companies and and investors and things. So you learning the game. Exactly. You learn the fact. See, we could talk. You just, <laughs> when you learn how to not put up, it's like, okay, I could put up my own money mm -hmm. and take all the risk, or I could pitch this. We can work this percentage base out. Mm -hmm. You front, you you put up some money, mm -hmm. and you put up some money. I'm coming out a little to no money up front. Mm -hmm. You still got to come out with something. Exactly. But now instead of five grand, mm -hmm. I got 50 grand to figure out. Mm -hmm. That's Niggas, exactly. don't, people don't understand it. I said niggas because it's Black History Month, but <laughs> people don't people don't understand that, bro. Oh yeah. man, he's preaching to the choir right there. I'm sorry, exactly. I'm sorry, look, that, hey, that that struck a nerve with me. Nah, <laughs> I feel you, I feel that. So you said so business hat, mm -hmm. creative hat, hard. Did the creative hat ever get mad that you had to put the business hat on? Yes, because when you have a creative mind, you want to do more um, than sometimes what the budget allows. Okay. You know, because, I mean, we made this film with less than $45,000. But at the end of the day, I wanted to make it look at least like a six-figure-plus film. So that takes a lot of time with setups, lighting, you know, dedication from the actors, wardrobe, set design. You feel me? Makeup. It's so much moving parts. And we only had eight days to shoot this. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Eight days straight. We did That's eight a lot days. of set changes. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of set changes. <laughs> a whole lot. Each day. A whole lot. And we had a, a, a lot of help from uh, a couple businesses that I shout out. You know, shout out Trill Taco, uh, my boy Sam, mm -hmm. uh, the African-American uh, library that is uh, actually downtown is right behind Lost and Found. So the school scene. Oh, I know, I know seen, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's actually the African American Library. And what people don't know, that's the first black school in Houston. So there's a lot of history in there. So with the hallway scene. Is it still just open for the public? It's open for the in? public. It's free. Might have to walk in there. Check it's free. Y'all got to go check it out. So, hey, appreciate y'all again. Y'all go check it out because we utilize that building actually twice once outside for the school scene mm -hmm. inside where you see the lockers when we was walking the hallway as well as the outside of the office when he visits the lawyer because that glass building they actually renovated the back side okay. 
of the building. So it's a pretty dope spot, man. They got a lot of history from 1865 all the way up to now. And you know that's a, that's the original fourth ward. But a lot exactly. of people don't know because they call that Midtown. Now. Mm -hmm. That's original. Exactly. Fourth ward. I took my dad. He one of them old school Houston dudes. You took the, the, the what they call this now? <laughs> yeah. They call it the Midtown. <laughs> Yeah. War, but nah, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Nah, I fuck with that. I fuck with that for sure. real. Because um, from from the films, mm -hmm. from Hooper, and to other films that you've been in, because you got you actually have a nice, you got a nice body of work that you're working with right for now. Sure. That's only so, going up. Preach. I do have to ask this question though. Um, out of all the actors, actresses you've worked with, have you ever been like? had a semi starstruck moment. Cause you know, you, you, <laughs> when you're in this industry, you don't ever want to see somebody and be like, uh, yeah. ooh, like that's, ooh, that's that person. Or ooh, this is such and such. Man, person. to be honest with you, before I started meeting the people that I've rubbed shoulders with and was blessed to work with, I used to kind of had that overwhelming emotion. I really like, oh my God says this person, but not really knowing what to say in a moment. Mm -hmm. And I realized I wasn't just mentally ready then. Right. Once I got all the reps in, went through all my, my lessons, I don't call them L's, I call them lessons, and did all the things, I knew that I was ready. I had a hunger I never felt before. So when I'm finally in these rooms and rubbing shoulders with these people that are notable, it just feels so normal. I mean, I just start having conversations and and we're trying to talk about the next projects. And you know what? I think that's the thing too, to that because you, you, this whoever's watching this right now, whenever they do see this, you know, hopefully some young up and coming people that's trying to really learn and grow and build, is that when you realize that people are just people, mm -hmm. that works. That works out so much better so because because in the industry that we're working, which is entertainment, whether what, what a no matter the, whatever side it is, like for me, media, you and film, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, all right, if I'm if I'm supposed to be sitting down and talking to these people, I might have a let you know moment that like, yo, I appreciate your work on the side, but I can't be just, I can't be fanned out. Because exactly. now people are just regular. Like I've seen certain people, I'm not going to drop the names on camera, but I've seen certain people, and this is not actually, this is a good thing, that like they just want to be treated normal. Mm -hmm. And literally will say that, like, yo, I just want to like move chill exactly. not now i got people forcing cameras in my face Thanks. so if i'm about to work with you mm -hmm. and you over here yeah exactly there's a difference between like oh i'm i, I can appreciate your work you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like I'm, i appreciate what you've done mm -hmm. and then to be like oh the car i need to i need to selfie yeah <laughs> exactly i feel you and stuff like that I feel you. nah but bro that's good that's good bro yeah the next movie i'm gonna i want to talk to you about besides the Hooper, which is, and make sure y'all go watch this. Yeah, streaming on Tubi for free. You don't even need a subscription for it. You can just go on Tubi. I was reason why the NFL interrupted. <laughs> I mean, Tubi interrupted the NFL for a reason. Yeah. And I mean, it's owned by Fox. People don't know that. It's the largest, uh, has the largest film database out of all the TV movie apps. And again, it's free. You feel me? So. And I think they're smart because what Tubi is doing. Uh, and I'll get back to my other question. What Tubi is doing, I've noticed, and you can make an attest for this too, they're allowing young creatives to come put their projects up there first. Exactly. And so, but on a business side, it's smart because they don't know what's going to catch. Exactly. So there's like, we'll give you a shot. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. We'll sh let you put your thing on here. Mm -hmm. And then if it catches, Tubi wins. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you win too. Exactly. So shout out to Tubi, man. Sure. Giving giving Give people it. opportunities out here. A lot of independent creatives opportunities. I mean, I know a lot of people like to talk about some of the Tubi movies, but to be honest with you, if you literally have an idea, you put it on paper, you put it on screen, you edit it, and you put it out to the world, I commend. I don't care what type of quality it is. That takes time and dedication on its own. Now, I know it's different levels and layers and I feel like your next film should be your best film. It shouldn't be the same as your right. last or worse. So I feel like as long as you're trying to progress and continue to flow in your artistic, you know, creative mind self and not doing it for the wrong reasons, just doing it just to say, hey, I did this movie. You know, actually doing it, you know, with a purpose. I feel like what's the what's the, what's the whole big deal and talk about you feel me? Because you, I promise you, you could not get 
a whole DP, a whole cam crew, a whole right. database, the, the food, the doggone crafty, the locations, the wardrobe, you know, set design, sending off the distribution, because any film that's on Tubi has to have a distribution deal. Mm -hmm. So off top, that alone, I know 30 filmmakers out here in Houston alone trying to find a distribution deal. And that is just in the small knit community I know. So at the end of the day, that is hard within itself too. I was gonna say, how do you, how does someone like seek that? How does someone like go find it? A I'm not saying, look, I'm not telling you just to give up your sauce for free. Yeah, yeah. But I'm facts. saying, but like, how does someone like go package their thing? Uh, their I mean, to be honest, just do your research. That's what I tell people. I mm -hmm. mean, do your research. Really look into things. I mean, they're, the internet is the best tool out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have businesses on there um, for the actors to get on your. Yeah, your IMDb pros, and you can you can look at things that you have access to that you pay a subscription to. I mean, it's right there in your face. So, I mean, I tell people all the time, do your research. Everybody just want to always get the game for free, right. like you said, you know. And I, I'm a type, I'm a firm believer in, you feel me, putting the work in. Because when you put the time and work in, you're going to benefit way more than getting the cheat sheet. Because sometimes if I give you the cheat sheet, it may not work for you that way. Cause that's your that's your sauce. Exactly. I feel that. And it worked for me the way that it worked for me. Like people ask, how did you just quit your job and do this? Like like what did you do? To be honest with you, I have no savings. I have none of that. I just jumped. I went and I believed in myself, and it just worked out in my favor. It might not work out for you. Like exactly. You might I mean, need I, you might need to work until you figure it out. Exactly. No, I feel that. I, I mean, I went through a, I went through some L's that a lot of people may not have bounced back from. And that's just the truth. All right. You know what? What's the, what's the Big Sean song? Last night took an L, but tonight I bounce, bounce back. back. Facts. All right. So, Dakari, Mr. 3D. Now, I do have to ask you this question, man. Mm -hmm. I ask everybody this question when they come on the show. Um, and with your process, your journey, especially going into your own film, working with who you worked with. <clears throat> you got some name drops. Um, and everything like that. I got to ask you this, man. I asked you this back in 2021. But, of course, it didn't come out. But everything happens for a reason. So, which one is more important to you, man? Is it that journey that you've been on, or is it the destination you're trying to get to? Oh, it's gonna it's gonna always be the journey for sure. You know, I mean, the journey is what defines the 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 destination. It's what makes the destination worth it. Just like Fifty said, "Son, wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for rain." So, I always say, the journey for sure. I like that. I like that. Shout out to 50 Cent for the quotes. For sure. For but sure. T taking over Houston at you there right now, too. Shit, that's until I get up there. I like that. For sure. <laughs> I like that. So, I actually have a, since we're talking about Houston, how do you think the film scene out here is right now? Uh, it's, it's definitely up, up and coming. I mean, I was part of a project that is trending on BT Plus right now, The Reading. Uh, with Monique, uh, Courtney Glaude, who's the director, my brother. We actually shot that back in 2020. That's when I first uh, met him. I was on set as a production assistant. And um, just seeing Monique in Houston in my backyard while everybody else is moving to L.A., Atlanta, New York. When I seen this, I, that was affirmation that me leaving my job, yo, it's coming. Stay patient, stay grounded, keep planting these seeds. And three years later, we have so many films. I and mean, when we got distribution companies out here in Houston, we have so much easier access to be able to get your own quality following and film and film base while being able to get it nationwide, even worldwide. I mean, you got Amazon Prime, you got Tubi, you get other deals like Paramount Plus and BT Plus. It's it's so much more opportunity out here. And with everyone filming out here now, there's a lot of directors outside of myself. There's so many directors, filmmakers, and quality at that. So we're continuing to build the way that I feel like we're gonna become a much more of a powerhouse is if we support one another and really continue to collaborate but collaborate in a bigger way than what we see right now because right now a lot of a, a lot of us and i'm guilty of it too at one point a lot of us are shaking chasing the quick money 
you know, and not looking at the long term, the bigger goal. I mean, we seeing, man, we can make a large six figure number right here. We maybe even make seven. Why not try to make ten? Mm -hmm. You feel me? Why not try to come together to where everybody can eat greedy, to where it looks like we all can be able to have our own table and still eat together. You feel me? I mean, it's big enough for all of us. I mean, the sun, the sun can hit all of us. I know for for damn show, sure, it's big enough for all of us. But we just have to get out of that mindset that we're trying to be the first ones to make Houston what it is. I mean, mm -hmm. I've never heard one film define the film entertainment industry. This is true. And I think also, too, uh, it's just the old – it's kind of like the old narrative of the city. Mm -hmm. It goes to music, anything entertainment-wise. I think people do it indirectly because it's just kind of embedded. It's almost like a competition. And so instead of collaboration, you get a lot of division. Mm -hmm. Or it's like fake collaboration. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how many times have you heard the, yeah, yeah, we're going to work, bro. We're going to work. Mm -hmm. We're going to work, bro. Mm -hmm. And it's like, are we really going to work? Mm -hmm. Or like, are we, we just talking? Because if we just shooting the shit, Mm -hmm. We can just shoot the shit, have this conversation, cool, and everybody just keep on hustling. Facts. But you know, but if you're just making the empty promise, it is what it is. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not downing that because down in the city, seeing on that, because like you said, it's a lot of dope actors. Mm -hmm. I know a shit ton of actors and actresses out the city that's doing amazing. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of film directors like yourself mm -hmm. that's starting to really come up. Mm -hmm. So it's really blossoming out here. Mm -hmm. I think it's really got something going on strong. Facts. But you know, Factual. but you know, bro, we could really just talk all day. Nah, for real. We could really just talk all day. We've been actually talking a little long. We was like, we, you know, whenever I turned the camera off real quick, mm -hmm. we was just like, bro, we it's our, it's been, we've been talking this long. It ain't Factual. even seem like that. But Factual. what I need to do, and what I need you to do is let the people know, last thing, mm -hmm. what is 2023, the rest of 2023 look like? We ended the first quarter of the year. So mm -hmm. what does the rest of the year look like to you? Uh, just pay attention. Is it? Just pay attention. Just pay attention. I mean, I know closed mouths don't get fed, but you feed a horse too much water, it will drown. And on top of that, you never expose your next hand. So it's just, with me, I'm all about talking about the move after it's already done. So, and now I'm on a wavelength of not even talking about it, you're going to see it. Because is getting to the point to where I'm backing away from the media light and really diving into my craft and my art because whether 10 people like in Sam Houston will watch until it went to that 100, 200, whether it's 2 million, 2 billion, or nobody at all, I'm gonna continue to create my art. You feel me? Because I do it for the right reasons. And I do it because it it just keeps me alive, you know. I could do it for free all day. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, I want to be able to create generational wealth, and I will. But at the end of the day, I know that this is, this is part of a reason why I'm here, not just filmmaking, but to touch people, you know, to touch people, to inspire, to motivate. And I believe that everything that I'm doing, especially with the film aspect, wearing different hats, hell, even the way that I am even just with my lady alone and the family and just the mindset I have about working together and standing together because I see what our people did in the civil rights era whenever we were together, whatever side of that spectrum we were on, whether they were with Martin, whether they was with Malcolm, us together, that's a threat. And at the end of the day, we are all so strong. We are a lot stronger like this than we are like this. You feel me? That's why we always throw that fist up. And we need to collaborate more because they divided us. They really divided us. And the more separated that we are, the weaker we are, which means we're honestly killing ourselves slowly while they're continuing to profit off of our culture. That's a great way to end. I ain't got much else to say, bro. Just look. God damn it. <laughs> We we gonna do stuff a little differently. You see this? <laughs> Just go go watch it. Facts. The Hooper out right now on Tubi. His social media right here. Bloop. My social media is right here. Bloop. My website right here. Bloop. 
By the way, y'all should check that out. Merchandise is on. It look real nice, too. It look real all pretty. So shout out to my boy Alex for helping us with that website design. And for myself, man, from Dakar, a.k.a. Mr. 3D Films, a.k.a. Sure. Next Out the City, and AKA, a.k.a. Not even Next Out the City, Next Out the Country. For sure. We selling out, man. And I said we because I'm going to get on that plane, too. Gotcha. All right, man. We gone, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you. For sure, for sure. You're a talented one.